Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Normende UWM346 and this is the dash U2 model. It exists in many different versions and numbers of this and that and I haven't yet figured out exactly what is the point but I think the ones without these, that will of course be the oldest, and then you have the U, and then you have the 1, and then you have the 2. So this is the latest model. And uh, it should be from between 1962 and 1969. And uh, this one is 22.7 kilos, so quite a heavy machine. It, uh, if the different models can have between 10 and 17 tubes so it is of course tube based and the uh, three transistors is all i could find as well the uwm stands for universal Voppel misplatz so that means a universal um sweeper measurement station so the idea is this screen here will show the signal level and then the frequency so this sweeper here is locked to the generators wobbler this is what, how they call a sweeper so more or less sweep and then this uh, scope here follows and synchronization with the generator and then you can of course select to have different outputs and different frequencies and all the different bands and all that stuff See, there's a big carousel switch in this unit. And uh, the modules here to the left, they are plug-in modules. You can have different modules here, and you can just remove all these, and then you just have a signal generator. So that is the backside of the CRT, of course. So it's a longer CRT, so they needed a little bit extra space for that one. It looks like I can take away the cover quite easily and then the cable will stay here so all that is good and we can see my serial number and everything here what I really like is to see the watt consumption so this tells me what is going on if something is bad and of course I want to do a visual inspection before I power this up and uh, <laughs> I had the idea I could go in by just taking away this chassis here, but look at that. It hits the CRT like that, and it's not getting out or away. It's kind of locked between the front plate here as well. So what the heck is the idea? So that is the left side. And uh, I still am not able to figure out how to get this out. And it looks like there is a little locking holder thingy up there. So how do I get this? I mean, what do I need to use violence or like a, I don't know, man. I am a little bit disappointed about that design. Look at that. I was of course able to get it out and you need to pull it out as much as you can and then put in a screwdriver like this then walk all the way to the end here and then do the and then of course i bent this one a little bit and the other one a lot more and then how are you going to get this back together like hammer it around and this thing is full of tubes and whatnot this is this is not what you want so let's just enjoy this wonderful unit I will, of course, try and dig in a little bit deeper and see what is in here, but what the... Look at that. So there's a steel wire that goes here through the circuit board, and then there's a switch, and a little wheel, and then connects to this switch. Isn't that amazing? And, of course, it's full of tubes, and... Uh, I need to go around and uh, check all the capacitors. They are nice and fine and no brown blown up parts. 
And all the little gearboxes. How nice. We. Oh no. Look at that. Let me see if I can point. Look at the transistors down there. With one of the pins of the transistor just flying around like that. What the? That is the weirdest. And then the plug-in modules over here in the left side of the unit. See, this shaft goes to a knob at the front. That one here. And this is the one that loosens so you can pull out those two plug-in modules. So now I'll go and see if I can count all the tubes. Oh, there was one. I need to tell you this. Look at this one. Why are you always out of focus? So annoying. That is a tiny little... Where are you? Oh, down there you are. What kind of little cutie tube is that? So this is the little CRT module. It is, of course, fantastic. That is the anode. It goes down to a little anode supply and rectifier and all that. And then there is, of course, another similar rectifier here for the cathode system. And we got X and Y deflection amplifiers up here. You can adjust some stuff for that. And the other amp is right there. We also said the gain and the phase. Yeah, it's in super condition. I really don't even see any dust or nastiness. I mean, this is this is real nice. And this is the input module for the analyzer. And I believe the module I got here is quite narrow band. You got all those uh, different frequencies here and the holes, they let you access some trimmers uh, for the different filter sections. See, there'll be the trimmers down there. And in here, we will just have some uh, filters. Yeah, let's have a little look inside this little input filter system. That is amazing how beautiful that is. And here we got some of those germanium transistors. The AF116 or something like that. And there's another one right there. Ooh, there's also one more here. It's just full of transistors. It's a lot easier to look in here with the plug-in mod modules uh, removed. So those three transistors, look at this little floating pin. That is, of course, the chassis and the ground for the transistors, and that is not in use. And this unit here, that will be the audio frequency marker setting or what is this Ooh, loose screws i better fix those as well while i'm in here so that will be the mechanical interface for the two of the tuners here let me see ah this is the one using this wire that is moving down there the readout as well and the other one got two different things you don't see this one oh here you go so this is the other one but there is also something going on on the inside because when i turn this see there's an outer and inner but i don't see what is ah that is the first first potentiometer and then there's a shaft in the middle then look at that there's a gearbox that goes outside and then it's connected to another 
oh, this is the coolest. Look at the red part that connects outside the gear thing. And then it goes in again and skips this first potentiometer. How complicated can you make stuff? That is just a winner. <laughs> and the, this one, the gearbox here, moves, of course, the switch inside this one. And then the shaft that moves to the left goes and rotate this one, the big round band indicator. Phew! Can you imagine designing stuff like this without CAD? I mean, they gotta have patience and a lot of paper. So this is my first power up and uh, I will uh, start with a very low voltage and see if anything happens. So this is only 15 volts and I measure only 1.2 watts so this tells me there isn't any short at least. 50 volts and 10 watts. And this is 100 volts and it's using 20 watts and it's going down. So this tells me I am starting to heat up tubes slowly. I put intensity to maximum focuses in the middle this is in the middle i don't know what's going to happen here but let's just uh, crank up the voltage because uh, this is 150 volts we see light here two hundred Look at that, we got light. Let's go to 220. And it's using 93 watts. Let's play with the, fo oh, look at that. Focus is perfectly fine in the middle. Wow, this is nice. So what can we do with this? This moves it a little bit. What is this doing here? Ooh. I don't know exactly what we expect here. This is probably how it should be. And then this is the sweeper, right? And uh, I think I need to go and measure if there's any output. This, of course, detects uh, frequencies between 34 and uh, 40 something here. So the idea is I select the right frequencies. And then... I connect the output to the input and then I should be able to see something. At least th this is, uh, yeah, what I would expect. Oh, it's actually responding to this one, I. Right? How is that possible? You gotta see this. What the heck is going on here? So, I got signal on this little scope I was doing some really weird turning around doing funny things and the oh yo yo oh yo 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 that was not supposed to say stuff like that any smoke no smoke no way, it exploded on me. I've been trying to find out where is this uh, blown up component. And there's no way to find anything. There's no cracked components. There's no brown cracked or anything at all. So I'm starting to open up different places to have a little deeper look. So this is the band switch. The really sexy 
PowerShell switch that's doing all the different band selections. And this is the one that is missing where it is not doing anything. So unfortunately, um, there is no winner winner today. That is real sad. See, all the nice parts and everything is just perfectly fine. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to do at the moment. I think I'm just going to pack it away and uh, forget all about this because I'm not going to poke around a million hours here to find absolutely nothing. And uh, it can be another day. My patience is over. I spent, I mean, more than an hour trying to find the correct component. So, and that is the, that is how I feel today. No more energy. So if this is the last clip, it is the last clip. I don't know.